Hi guys, today I'm making a video about thyroid cancer. I was initially diagnosed when I was 21 in 2016 and it's now come back for a second time in 2019 when I'm 24. Uh, a lot of people have different questions or want to know how it all went down, so let's just get into it. A lot of people want to know how I knew that my cancer came back because for three years I did not have thyroid cancer and I was cancer free. Uh, whatever word you want to use but so i was going to see my doctor i was seeing her every at first it was every like six weeks and then it was every three months and then it was every six months and then she was like okay i don't need to see you for a year just make sure that you keep taking your hormone your medication everything's all good just do a few blood tests and as long as those look good i don't have to see you and then I was just going along like usual and I went for, they did, they would do some like ultrasound scannings of my thyroid bed. So that was in October, October, 2018. And my doctor was telling me, she was like, yep, yeah, we've had something come up on one of your scans that wasn't there before. And I was like, okay, there's no way that there would be a harmless growth in the same spot that I had thyroid cancer. So in my heart and like in my intuition, I just knew that very second, like it's back, it's come back. I'm going to need another surgery, but also I've done the surgeries before. I've had misdiagnoses before. It could either be a misdiagnosis or I'll just have a surgery and move on. Um, so in the moment I didn't quite freak out, but I did know like in my soul that that was it. And it wasn't going to be harmless. Like they thought, you know, people do get like harmless stuff, but I just knew no, no, no way. Um, so that was in October 2018, right around Halloween. And I remember I was like, okay, don't let this take over your Halloween. Don't let this ruin your Halloween because it still could be not that big of a deal. It still could be like six months out. It still could be nothing. Like still try to go and have a good time. Uh, yeah, I didn't have a really good time on Halloween, uh, but I tried. I tried to like just keep doing normal things because for the next six months or so, um, it was like you need to get a a scan here and a biopsy there and you need to go to this lab and you need to go to that lab but that lab can't do it this way and this lab can't do it that way but they don't have really good pictures from here and like if you've ever had a medical problem that that needed a lot of different people to communicate you just know there's always drama of like we don't really like these guys and I don't really trust that doctor and this doctor has an ego so like don't go to him and I'm like can someone just tell me what's going on like I don't have time for this and I'm definitely really stressed out about a needle going into my neck five to ten times um, because on top of that I have a huge 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 lifelong phobia of needles so when they told me you're gonna need to just have a little biopsy on your neck, no big deal, I went into full panic. Like if you were scared of snakes and someone said you had to like make out with a snake or you had to have a fear of heights and you have to go cliff diving, like for me, it just was not gonna happen. And like, it sounds so stupid, but because of my phobia, I felt like I would rather have cancer and have a surgery than to have a biopsy and also then have cancer and have surgery. I was like, if we can just skip this part and go straight to the surgery, that would be the best case scenario for me because the biopsy is really, really freaking me out. And I mean, I would wake up and I would just have like this internal like fear, like just like fear of being alive. Like it was so crippling and so like it ruined weeks for me, weeks for me. I would try to do normal stuff and I just could not do a damn thing. Like I would wake up. It was so pathetic. I mean, I would wake up. I would sob. I would just start crying. <laughs> I'm laughing now, but it wasn't funny. I would cry and I would try to do like a normal, like a workout class or something. And I'd be like crying and dancing, but still crying. <laughs> and my teacher probably thought I was so like, I, they had no idea, but they probably thought I was just losing it. And I was losing it, but I was trying not to. And I was trying so desperately hard not to lose it. But damn, it was rough. And so that, ha that, messy drama doctors saying go here go there do this do that that happened until about february 2019 so all over christmas break i was just a wreck uh new year's eve i was a wreck um yeah it was just messy and so finally we were like you know what we need to go to an expert because having my hometown doctors go back and forth isn't getting us anywhere and so we went to the John Wayne Cancer Center at 
St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica, and we saw Dr. Melanie Goldfarb, who is incredible, and all she does is treat young adults or adolescents with thyroid cancer. So she's not seeing like elderly people. She's not seeing even just regular adults. She's not seeing people with diabetes. She's not seeing like, cause my endocrinologist monitored people with diabetes, young, old, like people with pregnancy diabetes. Like she was, I mean, she kind of did it all, but she didn't have like a focus. So we went to someone who was a specialist and this is all she sees all day, every day. So we were like, perfect. So I go into this like it was like February 1st or something like that. And I go into this appointment thinking, okay, she is gonna like talk to me, get to know me, get to know my history, ask me all kinds of questions about like my past experience with thyroid cancer, um, maybe plan for like the next step or like the next scan or like what her treatment plan might be. And that didn't happen. Uh, I get there. She is down to business. I mean, she's already seen my stuff. She doesn't need to waste time to like ask me the same questions. And she uh, she has the, an ultrasound scan machine in every single room. So she was like, just lay on the bed. I'm going to do the ultrasound right here. And I can tell you right now, like what's going on. I don't need to send it to a lab to have someone read it, to call you later, to leave you a voice. Like none of that. I'll just tell you right here, right now. And I was like, okay, cool. And so she puts me on the ultrasound machine and I'm like watching the computer at the same time. And she's like doing this little scanny thing. And she's like, oh yeah, that is big. That is ugly. That does not look good. And I can tell you right now that needs to come out. And I, I see this all the time and I'm pretty sure that's cancer. You don't need to have a biopsy to tell you that. And I was like, ah, that's so much information. <laughs> like, first of all, that's great that I don't need to have a biopsy because that was my real hang up. But second of all, uh, you just confirmed that I have cancer and uh, when to schedule the surgery. So my past two surgeries were on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So I said, let's just do Valentine's Day. Let's knock out every holiday as they go, which is like just my ironic sense of humor. Uh, so knowing what I knew, that I knew I'd have to have the surgery, I knew that it would be in two weeks. Uh, I had a friend come visit me. I took some time to do stuff for myself. I called the restaurant I work at and I said, I'm going to be off at least the entire month of February. I don't know when I'm going to come back. I called my modeling agency. I called my acting agency. I told them the same thing. I said, I'm going to be at least off for an entire month and I don't know when I'm coming back. Um, as far as it acting and modeling and image stuff is concerned. I have no idea what my scars are going to look like. I have no idea if they're going to be the same because they could have used the same. They could have used different. Um, they could be worse. They could be, I mean, they could be horrible. Like I just, there's no way to know. And I had to prioritize my health and just say, I don't know. So I'll call you when I call you, but for now I have no idea what to expect. So on top of that, I still had to pay rent and bills for the month that I lived in my apartment but didn't actually live here and lived in my parents' house and also not working for an entire month. It, I was, I was, I mean, I was a mess. I was stressed. Basically, if you saw me in the month of January, I was a shell of a human being. Like I was here, but not all here. Um, I was really sad. I was really, I was mostly really scared. Uh, there was so many question marks and unknowns and just, it's just not, a happy thing to go through I mean obviously but I was just bummer city so cut to the surgery itself she used the same incisions actually so the same incision she used to open up my neck uh, <laughs> and take out all my lymph nodes from here to here I think she said there was about 20 lymph nodes and three of them had cancer in them but she took out a lot more so that the cancer doesn't have anywhere to like hang out and like reproduce and ideally not come back. Uh, I feel like I'm going to jinx it even by saying it out loud. Um, but like that was the thought is that if you remove all the area that it's hanging out and spreading, it cannot hang out and spread anymore. So they're gone. They're over. Party's over. I like that she used the same scar because it wasn't so much for me to like get used to having a new scar on my body. Like it's just the same scar, but it's a little bit more notice a little bit more noticeable. And then she saw my previous scar. They had used really aggressive stitches, like like stitches you should have used on like your arm or leg, not like 
there was no plastic surgeon involved. There was no one that was concerned with like how the scar would heal, if it would be flat, if it would be bumpy. So they were just like, whatever, close her up. And uh, she was like, I don't, I don't like that. There's like bumps there. It's healed so crazy. Like if you look at the old pictures, it was so like just wonky. Like it didn't heal like flat and like nice, like it should have. Um, so she's like, I'm going to try to see if I can redo that scar. So basically I'm going to cut off your old scar <laughs> and just close it back up again and hopefully give it a better shot at healing. There is a chance it could be worse. There is a chance it could keloid again. Um, so my body does something called keloiding. Some people, some people's bodies do it. Some people don't. Uh, it also depends on the area of your body is that your scar tissue kind of like goes above and beyond. It's like the overachiever of scars and produces so much extra scar tissue and it's like bumpy and itchy and painful and like the nerves are all like messed up and like send weird I mean I don't know like sometimes I'll randomly get so itchy like right here but you don't want to scratch it because it hurts still um so she was like maybe if I redo your scar it won't keloid it'll just heal like a normal scar but there's also a chance it'll keloid twice as bad and I was like okay honestly there's so much going on just do it like and I'm not going to have another opportunity to have this cho this choice to have my scar redone. So you might as well just give it a shot. And if not, these will both heal at the same time. And like, just try, you know, it's worth a shot. Um, so this was actually not used as like, there was no surgery going on under my skin here. It was just to redo my scar. And as it turns out, I keloided again, <laughs> um, which all you can really say is like, bummer for me. And... We tried and that's all but basically the surgery was only on this side um, and the way that the surgery works is that it also cuts through a lot of your nerves <laughs> so i don't i when i woke up from surgery i couldn't feel like my ear down to my collarbone like this whole area i could I, it hurt on the inside but the skin i couldn't feel anything i couldn't if i wore an earring on both ears i could only feel this one and like this one would be like i don't know maybe it fell out mm, i can't feel it uh, it was so strange, and my doctor was like, you might have the nerves regrow, you might not. And I was just like, oh god, this, this is great. Um, better than having cancer, but still a strange side effect not to feel your neck. I still can't feel most of this. Like this I can't feel, but I'm starting to get like some sensation back. I can feel my ear again, I can feel my collarbone again, but like the main area on my neck is still super numb. It's a weird thing. I don't remember that happening last time, but there was a lot going on. So I don't know. I just don't remember it being so pronounced. And now it's like one of the most noticeable effects is that I can't feel anything. <laughs> it's so weird. So I got out of surgery. Everything went well. Uh, I was still kind of not all here. I was on a lot of medication, a lot of anesthesia, still kind of loopy. And I talked to the doctor. Uh, I think I even took a picture with her. Um, she doesn't want to be in it, so I'll blur out her face. But uh, and I asked her and I said, so where can I pick up my medication? Where can I pick up my painkiller prescription? And she was like, you don't, you don't need that. And I was like, what do you mean I don't need that? She was like, we don't really hand out like painkillers anymore. Like, like you don't, I don't think you're going to need that. And I was like, lady, I, I've had this surgery before. I think I need it. I think I know that I'm going to be in a great deal of pain. And she was like, no, you don't really need that. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, you can just you can just go to your local CVS and pick up some Tylenol and take like four of those at a time. And I was like, you want me to take Tylenol and you just cut open my neck from my jawbone to my collarbone and you're telling me Tylenol? Oh my God. It was, I was like, even in my state, I knew like there's something wrong with that statement. <laughs> but yeah, they don't, she decided that that was not something that I needed to have heavy duty prescription painkillers for. Uh, I guess because the risk of like addiction and like the side effects are really strong. Um, but I was in a lot of pain. Um, picture of me crying in the back seat on the drive home because I was so sad and in so much pain. Uh, the next couple days were really rough. Uh, granted, I didn't have any pain medication. Um, I know I sound like I'm whining and like begging for drugs, but honestly, I was in so much pain. Like she just opened up my neck. And then if you can imagine sleeping with your neck uh, in that state, 
was not the easiest. So anytime I would try to roll over, that would not be comfortable because I'd have to support using these muscles. If I wanted to sleep on this side, I would have to support using these muscles. Um, and I could definitely couldn't sleep on this side because I would be like crushing it. And it was just, it was just a no. Uh, so being the planner that I am, I got this guy which is a pillow that you can shape into different shapes. So it's meant for airplanes and it's like memory foam, but it's got a spine so you can put it into all different shapes. And this really helped me to sleep sitting perfectly upright, which is so unnatural. Um, but anyone who tells me they need any sort of neck surgery, which is probably arguably the most painful surgery, uh, get this pillow. It is the best $25 you'll ever spend. Even if you're going on an airplane, I swear to you, I still sleep with this every single night because I, I just love it. Um, it really helps if you have any neck or shoulder issues. Um, so after that, uh, I went back to the doctor one time, or the surgeon one more time, because uh, she didn't use any stitches. I was just held together with tape, which sounds crazy and was a little bit crazy. Uh, and she just had to remove the tape for me. And if I had known how hard you just rip it right off, I would have done it myself. But I was so careful like not to touch it or like not to even like look at it too much. Um, but I went there and she's like, are you ready? Boom. And I was just like, that was all that was holding me together. That's it. <laughs> that was it. Um, and as soon as I got the tapes off, I have a very, very mild allergy to like adhesive of band-aids and tapes and things like that. So I was a little bit red, but they looked so good. Like they were so flat. They were so smooth. Like my skin was just perfectly like this. And that lasted about two weeks until I started to do like this like the keloids decided like let's produce all the scar tissue like the most scar tissue and um, that was challenging obviously because I had had this one redone to avoid having a keloid and then I have another keloid uh, bummer for me um, it doesn't it's not a huge deal it just means your scar is not gonna be like like looking that good or like looking that smooth and it's also gonna be much more painful and also itchy really itchy um so i remember after that i mean i went home and she said we don't want to do the last time i had radiation treatment and she said we don't want to do any more radioactive iodine because the more you have in your system the more it builds up in your system and it can really affect women's fertility which means i would have to consider freezing my eggs and for anyone who doesn't know freezing your eggs is one uh, really long process and a lot of hormones involved and a lot of needles involved and not something I'm particularly interested in doing if I don't have to and also very expensive <laughs> not just the procedure but you have to pay rent for your eggs for uh, the next X amount of years until I want to have kids so if I want to have kids in 10 years I'm paying rent on my eggs <laughs> it's just not something that I really wanted to do she knew it wasn't the best idea ever if I could avoid it, that would be great. So we decided to skip any radiation. As far as I know, chemotherapy is not something that's used to treat thyroid cancer. So that was never in the question. Um, so yeah, she just said, you know, you had your surgery, you're cancer free, go on your merry way, which kind of sounds too good to be true for me, but I'll take it. Um, so then I just, uh, I mean, I was good. I mean, I went out and I lived my normal life and um, I was cancer free, but it felt so awkward to just have like this huge, this huge surgery and then to all of a sudden be like, no, you're good. You're good now, you're cancer free. And to tell people like, people would be like, oh, did you just have a surgery? And I was like, yeah, I had cancer, but I'm good now. Like it was such a weird, like awkward, like I'm just good, okay, I'm just good. <laughs> um, and for the next two months, I was just good. I was happy, uh, everything went well. I was positive, I was looking on the bright side, like I just beat cancer for the second time, like how cool is that? Like modern medicine is so advanced that I'm here, I'm still here, like how much better could life be? And then almost two months to the day, I had a total breakdown, like a total emotional, like depressive episode straight out of the textbooks. I was just so so sad and so empty and so like just all that fear came back of like yeah you survived but it's so it's so great and it, the reason it's so great is because you also could have not 
Um, and that came just crashing down on me. And I was still running on like the adrenaline of like, you just got out of there so great. And then I turned back and was like, but you could have not. And you really could have not. And, and of course I'm so lucky, but it's like the dark side of the coin just came all crashing down. And I said, oh my God, I can't do this. I can't do this by myself. I can't, I can't navigate this. This is just too scary. Like it's so deep and it's so dark that I need to find a therapist. And so that's where I'm at now is that I'm seeing a therapist because of course I'm lucky. Of course I'm grateful, but I'm just, i just live in this state of fear of like, when things are going good, I kind of get suspicious of like, this is too good to be true. This is too, like, this, no, there's something up. There's something growing. Like, I'm sure the next scan's going to come back weird or like, this never has lasted for very long. So just wait. Like, I just feel like I'm on the edge of a cliff all the time. Like, just waiting for like one wrong step, which is not a good place to be in. It's a really scary place to be in. Um, it's getting better, but it's a weird feeling to be like, you should be so happy and you know everyone around you is kind of lifting you up but you're like no hold on like I'm I can't get out of bed today like I can't I can't go a full day without crying like it's a it's a very complicated emotion to be so grateful but also guilty for being so sad and like just just really scared on top of that uh my scars are back at day one stage one fresh brand new uh pretty bright compared to what they used to be and that means a lot of strangers are in my business. Um, people have no shame. People have no boundaries. People generally are just curious or just concerned or honestly just speak without thinking. Um, but every, almost every single day, I get someone that says, what happened? What's wrong with your neck? Did you get in an accident? Did you have a surgery? Did you have your thyroid removed? I had my thyroid removed. Um, and it's like... It's great. I love to have the conversation. That's why I'm making this video. That's why I continue to talk about it. And it's on my terms. So I can talk about it when I want to. And I can make make videos like this and talk to people and educate people. But it's not always great when it's at the time and place of someone else's choosing. So if it's like when I'm at work and I can't leave and I have to be professional and they can leave and they can say whatever they want, but I'm kind of trapped to say like, yeah, I had thyroid cancer. And then someone tells me that, you know, their mom just passed away from cancer. And I'm like, ah, ah, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm truly so sorry, but, but that's heavy. And I work at a coffee shop. So can we talk about something else, please? (laughs) Or uh, just the craziest things people say to me. Um, And it, and it's kind of just a reminder of like, Hey, you look different. Why? And it's not always the question I want to answer. It doesn't always make me feel good. So I kind of have like a three tier rating of what I, how much information I volunteer to a stranger. So if I'm having a really good day, I'm feeling confident, I'm feeling like I can talk about anything and nothing, nothing could really upset me right now. I'll say, yeah, I had thyroid cancer and people will either, you know, say, I'm sorry for asking. I say, no, it's okay. That's why I told you because I want to talk about it. Or, you know, someone else in my family had cancer. So I understand how hard that must be, which, you know, it's not a nice topic. If I'm having like a like a med day, like kind of medium, I'll say that I had my thyroid removed. People really freak out when you say the C word. If you say cancer, everyone kind of steps back and I was like, I'm so sorry for asking. That's so rude of me. Whoa, are you okay? Whoa, oh my God. And it's like, it's not a big deal. It's just a disease. It's a disease. Like there's different levels of cancer and like different, they're all different. I mean, so it's like people really freak out. So I try to not use the word cancer. If I'm not having a good day, I'll just say I had my thyroid removed. And that's usually enough information to satisfy curiosity of people. Um, If I'm having a bad day and I really don't want to talk about it, I can put on this mood of like, I had a surgery. Point blank period, end of conversation. I had a surgery. Most people get the point that you should not ask people about their medical business especially if they're a stranger and you're in public and it's totally an inappropriate question to be asking. It usually, it almost always is. I will volunteer more information depending on the day, but sometimes uh, I had a surgery is more than enough to get the point across that I don't really want to tell you any more than that. Um, I've even had people say, I'm so sorry for asking. That's really personal of me and I shouldn't have asked. And I said, yeah, 
yeah, because I, I, it's really hard for me to say, and I don't really want to talk about it. Can we talk about something else? I don't know why. It just it's hard for me to like shut down people's innocent human curiosity because it's fine. It's fine to ask questions, but sometimes I don't want to answer. So I found that if you take out the word cancer and just say thyroid removed, it's a lot less like freaky to people. And even further, if you just said I had a surgery, people can say, okay, it's a surgical scar, no big deal, nothing exciting. Because people think that I was in like a jet ski accident or I was held at knife point or someone slit my throat. Um, someone actually said that to me. I've heard it all. There's really nothing that can shock me. Very rarely am I like, what? <laughs> uh, basically, I'm here today. Um, I'm working on things. I'm working on the complicated emotions of talking about it, but talking about it on my terms, talking about it when I'm having a good day and finding a way to politely say, you know what, I'm not really in the mood to talk about it today. And a big part of that is using all of this and channeling all that power and harnessing it into something that fuels me and something that drives me and that pushes me to be more proactive and follow my dreams and even have dreams because for so long, I didn't dream, I didn't plan, I, d I still don't have plans for my future really, I'm just like winging it because I didn't think I'd be alive to see 24. I didn't think I would be alive today. I don't know what my future holds, I don't have any real big goals or dreams, um, but that's something I'm working on and I'm taking baby steps and one of them is to make more YouTube videos, which sounds so, so trivial, like of course anyone can make a YouTube video, but something I've always wanted to do. and. I promise you the next one is not going to be about my health. Um, it's just something that a lot of people ask me about. Uh, so I figured I would get that all out on the table. Um, but people ask me a lot about beauty stuff. People ask me a lot about like modeling and acting. People ask me a lot about skincare, which I would love to talk about so much more than this bummer. But also it's sort of like an elephant in the room where I'm like, let's just get it all out because I'm not super private. I'm pretty much an open book. Uh, I'd rather just talk about it, let it go and move on. It's a part of me. It's not all of me. Um, something I'm really working on is, is just using this as the force that drives me and not the force that destroys me because it could easily go both ways. And I've had it destroy parts of my life and take away months of my life. Like, I cannot tell you one thing that happened in March or April. It's just I was on autopilot. So... I'm not doing that anymore. Like I'm, I refuse to let it take this control over me. Um, and if that means just silly things like making more YouTube videos or posting things that make me laugh or just having dreams or goals at all and having the courage to pursue them, I think is huge. And that's a huge part of recovery for me is to get my life back and say, I'm healthy and I'm here and I'm here to live my life and not just survive because for so long I was just surviving. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I know it's kind of a huge bummer. Um, it's not like the lightest topic. It's pretty heavy. Um, I really thank you for watching. And I thank you for sticking with me and for listening to something so heavy and so close to my heart and something that's really real for me. And if you're going through this, you're not alone because I felt super alone. I didn't know anyone who was talking about it. I'm here to talk about it. I'm here to answer questions. You can find me on Instagram. You can message me. You can tweet me. You can email me. Uh, I promise you I'll respond to it. I've had people reach out and that's really the reason I make this is because if one person reaches out, if this helps one person, that's what I want to do. Thank you so, so much for watching.